Well, as Corrine alluded to there, this has got the makings of a huge occasion. The Australian needs the head-to-heads 2-1, but Sherrick has won their most recent meeting. And as a result of Sherrick coming here unseeded, we have two former finalists meeting in the very first round. All to play for. The crowd are ready for another instalment of top quality drama. It's packed here at Lakeside. So let's hand down to the little man with the big voice. Over to you, Richard Ashdown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2018 Lakeside World Championships. And we now continue with the women's competition here at the home of World Dance. and Lakeside World Championship finalist, the reigning Scottish Open champion, England's Fallon Sherrard! Two former finalists, 53 BDO ranking titles between them, only room for one in the quarterfinals. Kareen Hammond against Fallon Sherrick coming live next on four. Then the first set, let's join the number one seed in the Women's World Championship, Dieter Hedman, and first of all, Vassos Alexander. Yes, such a difficult format. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First set, first lag is going to the 12th first. The first to two sets, always very difficult to come back from one set down. A fast start, absolutely crucial. It's a former finalist against a former finalist. 24. Australia against England, Hammond against Sherrick. Dieter, which way is this one going to go? It's a difficult one to call, to be honest with you. Fallon hasn't been playing too great, and she's coming back into form. Corin's been here traveling with us all and getting the feel of how we all play it's not that they don't play the same in australia but she's doing a year in england and europe to get the feel of different places in playing and she's been playing very very well a few people have been tipping both these players as possible outside bets for the title well you can't discount them <laughs> Because, as I say, they're both finalists. Corin last year and um, Fallon Shara a couple of years ago. Yeah, wasn't back it? in 2015. Yeah. Yes, and she came and through she... three tough matches to reach the final. 2 1 in all of them. And then lost 3 1 to Lisa Ashton. 41. Yeah, and Lisa was on fire then. And I thought Fallon was as well. But um, I think she hit. So many 180s, didn't she? Yeah. That on um, finals, then ever since then, our game has just gone off just a slight little bit. And she's been putting the work in. My dad, you say, first game is always a bit difficult. 48. 
and it's also so much difficult when you're playing such a good friend because as you hear Corin said they travel together they're under the same management as well so oh, I'm lucky that was in and out she has left the finish though with that bounce out 16. Corinne Unicorn, there's Mum Sue. And her sister Felicia. She's a very good player as well, actually. Sixteen. Forty-one. Corinne Unicorn, and that's her other half, Gary. Triple 20 would leave double 14, no. 51. Well, this would be some way to win the first leg of the match. Can't be done. 14. you require 56. 16 for tops. There it is, is straight in. First blood Australia. Yes, she seems very composed on that double, wasn't she? Fallon seems okay. It's just that first leg getting it into your stride. Fellow Australian Tomo came through a tough old match yesterday. Corinne arrived here last year and didn't drop a set on her way to the final, but then didn't win a set in the final. Because <laughs> she ran into Lisa Aston, who was playing Forty superb. One. But that starts, though, sometimes. Lisa's won, what, 15, is it now, sets in a row? One Something like that. Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I think so. On this stage. Lisa seems to really shine on this stage. She's a phenomenal player, but this stage she just seems to just 41. shine, and some of us don't for some reason. There's still time. Oh, yeah. oh, of course, of course there is. Thirty-eight. Titi, you will play Sharon Prince or Maria O'Brien. Yes, I in will. The well, quarterfinals on Thursday. Yes, I, OB is my Lady Spears partner at the moment. Do you enjoy playing good friends of yours? Not really. <laughs> Not really. I don't. I don't really like playing really good friends because you think one of us got to win and one's got to lose. And I don't want to be the loser. <laughs> but I'm all right after. If I lose, it doesn't matter. 14. Now, here we go. 56, <laughs> Fallon Unicorn, 138. Double 18 for double 12 for a 1-3-8 for Fallon Sheriff. Oh, and Fallon Unicorn, 88. <laughs> 18 for Bullseye. Oh, double 7, she's left with hitting the treble. 74. And you require 12. Yeah, that's been shown in the same way. And now it's game Fun on. Game on. Game on. 
Now just Fallon's taken a leg. It'd be interesting to see if she kick on from there now. Fallon, who has 15 BDO ranking titles to her name. Most recently, the Scottish and Swiss Opens of 2017. Kareen last year won the Isle of Man Classic, West Coast Classic and Victoria Eastern Open in Australia along with the Geelong Dark Club Classic, the British Open and the Czech Open. 41. Kareen, the number five seed, she has 38 ranking titles to her name. And the runner-up here last year, of course. <laughs> One and twenty-four. It's a very close game, isn't it? No one's running away at all. Forty-five. Well, she's left one seventy. That was an unlucky dart. Forty-five. Oh. Top she wants. 81. Top she nearly gets. But this is for a breaker throw for Fallon Sherrick. Double 16. Yeah, that's been shown in the third round. Nicely Double done. Fourth round is Fallon the 21st. People. I, I do believe, I think the winner of this game plays Lisa Rushton, I think. Because we're all in that kind of art. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Lisa beating Rianne Griffiths. 2 0 yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's this year we it's the hardest field so far on paper for the ladies yet to be fair apart from lisa so far and rianne griffiths we haven't really produced the darts that we know we can do so i'm just hoping with one of the girls <laughs> kind of come together even myself in my next game to show that we can actually really play good darts just as good as the men all four of the women's quarterfinals take place on Thursday. 55. Semi-finals Friday. Yes. And final Saturday. And final Saturday. Yes. After that, you're clear, DJ. <laughs> yes. One, well, all fingers crossed and everything crossed, I am open. <laughs> How would you celebrate if you won this finally? 66. You know, I haven't even think that far. <laughs> I, I dare not to think that far. I just do it when I, I get there. It happens, then, then I will. I know one of my sponsors said, if I win it, he will be here. He said I will be running on that stage. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to that then. Forty-one. Just three more wins, Dita. 
<laughs> it's easy when you say it like that, isn't it? <laughs> 85, well, she nearly took out 138. The 139 can't now be done. 81. Dead last start. Requires 77. Pressure on the 77. 18 for tops. With Fallon 58 points away from the set. Yeah, she needed that. Very good finish. Fifth line is going to turn first. Demo. That's the beauty of ladies. Those are never quite sure what we're going to do. <laughs> You watch the way Corinne throw her darts, how it comes across her face. I mean, uh, my throw isn't that great. <laughs> she, it comes and twists across her face. Not to Bobby George proportions, but a little bit. <laughs> it is but it works for her. I mean, I think I've got an unorthodox throw myself, but it works for me. And hello, Bobby, if you're watching. Yes, Bobby hasn't been very well himself, has he? He's out of hospital now. So get well soon, Bobby. Go on then, fill it up. One hundred and twenty-one. Fifty-nine. Filling in the one hundred and forty-one. Six darts if she needs them from one four one. She will need them. Put some. Perhaps the ball's over the last dart. 25 would leave double 18, but oh, no, she went treble 15. To leave double eight. Pressure being applied by Kareen Hammond. Good pressure being applied by Kareen Hammond, but this is set point. Fallon Sheriff. There it is. <laughs> Very good on a doubles. Three out of five. That's sixty percent, and the set wrapped up by three legs to two. It's Sherrick with the advantage. It's Fallon Sherrick who has the early advantage. Let's rejoin the commentators. Yes, just one set away from Thursday's quarterfinal. The former finalist. What can Kareen Hammond do about it? Whenever she's won on this lakeside stage, she's won in straight sets. Second set, first leg is from the 21st, Demon. Share it with the darts. Straight into the treble 20. 100. You will never guess at home what Dieter and I were discussing <laughs> during the commercial break. <laughs> Dieter was suggesting that the music at Lakeside, they were playing Hey Jude, which is a great song, but we thought perhaps something more contemporary might be good, and, and Dieter's suggestion was Man's Not Hot, <laughs> which does include the line. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. And quick maths is something that you do need oh, definitely. to be a great darts player. <laughs> and actually, to, to continue this theme, to stretch it almost to breaking point, <laughs> you were telling me that it, it is quite hot up on that stage. Well, I thought it is an understatement. <laughs> it's really, really hot. <laughs> yeah. That was brilliant. <laughs> 44. Fallon's found the groove now. 
83. But Corin can turn it on as quickly as that. 58. She never gives up. She'll shake her head and whatever, but she never gives up. And I don't think she would want to lose 60. two sets to nil. Because it's such a short format, your brain is working overtime, to be honest with you. Because you just think, I haven't got time. I need to get this set to stay in it. She lost 2-0 on Four debut two. two years ago. Beaten by a certain D. Headman. I always like a debutant. <laughs> <laughs> because the crowd... It doesn't come across on TV. I don't know why, but the crowd, it's a brilliant darts crowd. They give you the respect that 16. you Family deserve when you're on stage. And I just thought Corinne wouldn't be used to anything like this. So she would be more nervous than I would be. 21. Well, this would make a statement at the start of the second set. One hundred. Coming in corner is 17. Treble 13 for tops, perhaps the way she'll decide to go. Treble 19 for double eight now. Bit of a mess of this, but... Coming in corner 58. Tops when she comes back, if she comes back. There's the big 18. Yeah, and that's three out of four yeah. on double top for Kareen Hammond. Second is in the total first. Demon. Everyone likes the other's preference of going for their finishes. Me personally, this is 79. I would have gone 19, 20 tops because I don't need a treble. But to me, 39, it's what she likes. But I always try to go for the easiest option that there is possible. 83. Both these players have been struggling with their scoring just a little bit, but as you can see there, no trouble with the doubles. 43. Three legs apiece. But it is the nature of set play, of course, that Sherrod is ahead. Yes. With, with it being such a short format, I like to see one set each because I think it just gives you that bit longer on the stage to, to get a feel of it. Because winning two sets, it, it goes so quick. You don't kind of familiarise yourself with that stage long enough. Do you notice people in the crowd? Or is it just a sea of faces? Sometimes I do, depends. Yesterday, to be honest with you, I, as I said, I was struggling with the heat and that, so I didn't really look at the crowd at all. You hear people as well. If, it, if you're not focusing, then you always pick a voice out that kind of gets... Well, you hear them if she takes this out. A 170 for Corrine Hammond needs oh, the bullseye. Oh, 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 very, very close. <laughs> 41. Corrine, you require 25. Nine for double eight. Oh, she's hit big 14, so three. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, she would I be suppose mad. if there's a good time to do it, it's when your opponent's back on 195, but... Yeah. 42. Pressure applied. By Fallon Sherrick. So, another go at 25. Oh, she's missed big nine again. She's going to miss big three again? No. So one dart at double four. Yes! 
all she needs. Her back is the 12th first. Gary looks very nervous, doesn't he? <laughs> Fifty six. What was that? No, it's the same. One hundred. No, no, it's the same. The highest checkout prize five is five thousand pounds, whether it comes in the men's or women's world championship. Twenty two. So it, uh, it, uh, Karine Hammond a moment ago was very close to securing herself at least a share of that 16 and she just failed to check out 170 I would like to see a lady do a nine dart on that stage I would like it to be me <laughs> we don't care who does it to be honest <laughs> It's just about time. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> well, there's three perfect darts. It doesn't start the leg, but my goodness me, she's caught fire now, Karine Hammond. This is what we saw from her last year. 41. 1-6-1 one remaining. Travel 20 would leave double 19. 68. Everyone has their own way of going for different finishes. As I said, personally, I, me, I would have gone for the 20. 83. Corinne, you require 93. Travel 19 and double 18. 14s and 16s. Can't now finish, but... 53. That leaves 40, which she's only missed once. In fact, she's only missed three darts at a double, and one of them was bullseye for a 170. Very good. Once again, excellent darts from Corrine Hammond. She's come back into this match, and how? She likes her double toe. Well, that was 3-0. It's it late, wasn't it, in that second game? It was. So it's all in this set now. Fallon didn't even get a dart at a double in that set. No. Not one. 59. One that's a good start for the first leg. One hundred. Eighty-one. A sudden death leg at two apiece. Should we get there? 96. Lorraine wins Stanley. She plays a bit later on in the week. I think Lorraine plays on Wednesday. Is it Wednesday or Tuesday? Wednesday, you're Wednesday, right. Wednesday, I think yeah, Lorraine you're plays. Right. 58. Anastasia is not here yet. She's coming down, because obviously the baby will be 11 months. Of course. Yes, because last year she was heavily pregnant, wasn't she? 61. 61. And reached the semi-finals. She lost 2-0 to Corinne. 62. 62. 62. 62. Corinne finished very well last year because Anna had, was on the doubles and she just missed a lot of doubles in that semi. 
and Warren just kept going. One oh eight. Treadle nineteen for double sixteen. Good last start. Leaves double eight. Still can be done with three eighteens and two twelves, but no, that's just gone south into the wrong treble. Forty-two. So here we go for a fourth leg in a row. For a holder throw, it's a move to within two. She's just been ruthless, hasn't she? Yes, she is finishing extremely well. All Fallon needs to do really now is just stay with her and hopefully that she will miss one, but just keep the pressure on. 46. 40. That was Trina Gulliver before she got all camera shy and turned away. <laughs> yeah, Trina is playing Vicky Proom, who was who's the qualifier. And she won the World Cup in Kobe in Japan this year. Vicky Proom. I call her a Belgium Swede because <laughs> she lives in Sweden. She needs to get another one in there just to get a little bit of a lead. 100. Her scoring's deserted her in this leg, Corrine Hammond. 22. You jinx it. <laughs> It's all right. 46, 60, 60, 22. Whereas this is much better from Fallon Sherrick. That's it. 40. Two tons and a ton 40. 80 when she comes back. To be fair, her sister Felicia is normally a lot more vocal than that. 43. She's letting a T-shirt do the talking. <laughs> 20 for tops. 14. Look at that score though. Hammond on 270. She's mad with herself, you can see. 84 for the Unicorn 14. She will be back even if she misses this, but she won't want to. 13. She needs to get this. Because Corinne is capable of taking that out. Nearly missed the big one. Double two. There it is. Phew, she says. Phew. Right, that, that was. That was proper pressure, Darts, so that was. One of the round, 25. One leg apiece, one set apiece. A maximum of three more legs in this match. One Good darts there, Fallon. Terrific darts from both players to start this leg. Because it really is a crucial leg to eat the girls, isn't it? 28. Well, win this one and you're one up with two to play. Yes. 
But Fallon needs to, if Fallon breaks Corin Ammon, then Fallon has got the throw in the next leg. So, and possibly in the decider if she if it goes wins down. the Buller. There was that section of the match through the second set and the start of this third when Corinne Hammond just looked like she was cruising towards the finishing line and then having won four legs in a row she's just gone off the boil visits like 28 45 and even that one 57 sometimes the break affects you and you can't put it into you can't explain it but just having that little break can totally change the game and it seems like that's what happened after the first set with Corin Sherrick with Shanghai on the 20s I heard John Rawling explain the origins of Shanghai during the last match but to be honest I didn't understand it <laughs> I, d I do understand that she needs double top to win the leg and just misses it. Fifty-seven. Hasn't hit double top yet in three attempts. Yeah, it's it's but that's the most one. important one. It takes her. To within a leg of the match and she has the darts and she's got her eye in it's taken Fallon three sets to actually find her mark because those previous set she was wavering quite a bit but now she seems to have found her mark very well on yes she nicked the first set by dint of some good finishing she was nowhere absolutely nowhere in the second and in the early part of this third set but all of a sudden she's found a scoring and that average of 78.1 in this third set is despite Six missed darts before winning the second leg at a double. 68. 213 points away now. But, Kareen Hammond says, hold on a moment. I'm not going anywhere. You're going to have to beat me. Six darts from 2-1-3. Finishing line starting to hove into view. 16. Only 60, though. Only 60. Well, Fallon will have first shot at the double if she hits the combination. But Corin can put some pressure on that shot. 60. Yes. Yes, oh, oh, double 18 for a 1-5-3 to win the oh, match. Oh, 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 she pulled the last start. <laughs> Excellent effort. <laughs> Treble 13 for double 16. This would be spectacular. Unlucky. Missed the big 18. So this is match point for Fallon Sherrick. Three darts in a hand. Double 16 the target. Double nine she now wants. Oh, now can't finish. No score. It's one of those funny doubles. That it's not, you know, not, not, not a nice double, double nine. This is to take us into a sudden death leg. It's exciting. Double 15. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's boy once again for Fallon Sherrick. Four mismatch darts, oh, but not five. The fifth finds the target. Oh, A tremendous deciding set played by Fallon Sherrick, the former finalist, and last year's finalist, Alan Sherrick of England, who goes through.
his way during that second set when Hammond found her form, but Sherrick suddenly burst into life in the deciding set, and she's the one who's through. Well, what a great match. First blood to Fallon Sherrick, then four legs on the spin for Kareen Hammond, but she went slightly off the boil in the decider, and Fallon Sherrick will be the player to take on Lisa Ashton in the quarters later on. What a win. match and it was Fallon Sherrick holding her nerve right at the end there the first match in the women's world championship this year to go all the way to a decider and despite that rally from Hammond in the second set at the beginning of the third Sherrick over the line well you could tell how delighted she was there that was a huge match cracking game great advert for the ladies game it, it was the match that I was looking forward to the most out of all of the games in the first all preliminary round it didn't disappoint. Corinne started to score a little bit better after the break, after the first set. I just get the feeling that the first break did affect Fallon's rhythm, and it took her a while to get it back, but when she got it back, by the end of the game, she played sensationally well to get over the line. You had really mixed feelings about that match, didn't you? Because you know both of them, and you play with Fallon. It, it was a tough one for you to watch. Yeah, I've, I've got a sore bump from sitting on the fence. I'm kind of glad it's over. But um, Corinne has got a lot to be proud of in 2017 and going into 2018. She now has a decision to make as to whether she wants to continue on tour or possibly go back to Australia. But Fallon will be delighted that she's through to the second round of quarterfinals. And uh, she can really look forward to the game against Lisa Ashton, where she will be seen as the underdog. So there won't be any pressure on her. What a match that will be. Well, Fallon is backstage, and I'm sure, as Paul said, she is delighted. <laughs> Rob, she is delighted. Fallon, congratulations, first of all. How are you feeling after that? Uh, over the moon that I've actually won it first game. It could have gone either way as well, couldn't it? It was very tense out there. How did it feel for you on that stage? Uh, it felt all right, but obviously there was a bit of nerves for the first set, and then especially then coming back on, so it was quite nerve-wracking. And, of course, we've just been talking in the studio about the fact you know Corinne very well. You've travelled together, you play together. Did that almost make it harder for you today? Um... Well, yeah, because obviously me and Corinne have bonded quite well because obviously she's over here for a couple of months. Well, no. But, um, yeah, we've got the same sponsor now and all that, so we've been sharing, travelling and all that, so it's really hard playing her now. I bet it is, but you thoroughly deserved the win. We saw your sister in the crowd wearing a T-shirt with your face. You made that for her? <laughs> I've got her it for Christmas. <laughs> that is a brilliant Christmas present. Are you going to get her to wear that in your next round against Lisa Ashton? Obviously, after she's washed it. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, you are up against Lisa next. Do you prepare any differently for that? No, not really. I just do the same practice routines and stuff. OK, well, well done. You did very, very well. Thank you very much. And back to you, Rob. Thanks very much, Seema. That really will be a huge match. It's a brutal draw for Fallon. If she's going to win it, she's got to beat the defending champion next. Well, when you want to win titles like this, you've got to be able to beat everybody in the draw. And she understands this, even though she's only 23. She's got so much experience. This is a fifth time here. She knows what the score is. But next time around, she may have to lift her average a little bit more to take out who was probably the best player in the world in Lisa Ashton. Three live matches down. One more still to come on. This afternoon, top quality dart so far from Corinne Hammond on a 50% checkout. Sherrick took the first set though with 60. And you know, sometimes these matches can be harder for the friends and family than they can be for the players themselves. And Danny Greats is down there somewhere with Fallon Sherrick's relatives. It certainly can be tough on the family, Rob. And Gary, she, uh, Fallon's, Fallon's partner, she put you through it in that first two legs. Yeah, the first, first, well, we just, she couldn't get her arm up. So it was like, they were always dropping into the ones. It was like, oh no. It was like, just, well, I'm shaking. <laughs> and her Fallon's mum, Sue, I mean, she's had a tough old year this year with illness. You must be so proud to see her up on that stage and one set up against Corinne. I know, I'm just hoping it ha she hangs on. You know, anything can change in this next set. It really can. And, of course, her sister's here, Philly. I mean, and you can get some rubbish presents off your brothers and sisters at Christmas. She probably got you the ultimate rubbish present. <laughs> this is the worst one. <laughs> this is the worst one. 
<laughs> but I but, but you'll, you'll give it to her if she wins this and gets through to the next round, won't you? Yeah, well, I'll, if she gets through to the next round, I'll wear it again. It must be lucky, I don't know. Well, the players are back out now, so I think it's time to see if Fallon can go all the way through to the next round. I just enjoyed the experience, really, and I'd played Lisa quite a number of times before with the same result always, but um, it was still a great experience. It's been a massive whirlwind. I've gotten to play darts all over you know, Europe and whatever, been to some amazing places, played some you know, really great games, made lots of great friends, um, won the British Open and then the runner-up in both the Classic and um, the World Masters, so that was fantastic. A month after, I went over to the Czech Open and I managed to pick up that title as well, so that was really good, and that's really the last tournament that I've played um, coming into this, so hopefully I can still keep that same form. It was always going to happen that Fallon and I would be drawn to play each other in the first round. I mean, we do travel together. Obviously, even though she's come into this tournament unseeded, she's a previous World Championship finalist herself and also a Women's World Masters finalist, and, and she's picked up a few titles this year too. So, I mean, while she's not seeded, she's definitely not one to be underestimated. So I'm hoping that we have a really good game. Whatever happens, happens. Some days they go in, some days they don't. We've all been there and, and it's really about what happens on the day.